what up guys yeah we've got another beer coming out you know that i guess you call it a holiday beer it is the lion and kugel snow drift vanilla porter out of them and of course the dog's gonna drink because i'm talking beer anyways we're gonna crack this open it is one of the few lion kugel beers out there that the dog i don't know every single time doesn't drink water unless i'm talking beer I forgot to move the water dish. Anyways, uh, this is one of the few Lion and Google beers out there that isn't a shandy anymore. So, there she goes. Pour it up. And, sorry, distracted. I was so excited to get into some beer tonight that I forgot to move the dog water. I just, I don't know. Hearing me talk makes him thirsty. Maybe just stresses them out. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is 6% ABV, which is a little higher than the normal uh, beers coming at them, coming from Lion & Kugel. Normally those are in the low fours. But um, according to them, it is a robust, robust porter aged in real vanilla. I feel like vanilla is aged in the beer, not the beer is aged in vanilla. But anyways, nitpicking. Let's get into the review in my nice smoked porter glass. Get in the review, get into the smell. I mean, I get, I'm getting kind of a, a an unsweetened dark chocolate in there. Some barley aspects to it. Maybe like, yeah, a hint of like a smoked wood. Kind of like you uh, you smoked a barrel and then you aged it in that. I'm not getting much of that vanilla. It, it's, I mean, it's just kind of, it, I'm just getting kind of your basic smoked maltiness to it with the yeah the that unsweetened chocolate not not very complex not a lot of things going on with it just a uh, I don't know there's there's nothing that's really exciting me to be perfectly honest uh, with this beer The malty uh, aroma to it, I'm a little worried. It, I feel like it's not gonna be that refined maltiness. It's gonna be more of that kind of rough around the edges maltiness. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong at just 6%. But it does have almost a bit of an, an alcoholy kind of aroma to it. But I, I'm, I'm not, it's not really grabbing me the aroma on this one. And normally, this is probably, if I look back at all my beer reviews, I think the, the aroma is one of the ones I'm almost more likely to give a thumbs up on. At least it kind of dawned on me when I was putting some more up. I'm like, I feel like I give thumbs up on all of them. Or a lot of them. But usually, you know, a smell of beer kind of perks you up. But this one is just, I guess I was expecting a little more from this thing. And so I'm giving it a half. Like, it's not awful, it's just, it's not really like, uh, you know, tickling my drinking bone or whatever. But let's see what happens when I taste it. So let's get into the taste. Eh. You did, you, you do get a bit of the vanilla, like a vanilla bean. It's not that pronounced. The majority of the, what I'm getting is that smoke maltiness on the front of my tongue. Some very, very dark chocolate. There's not much sweetness to it. I wish there was a hint more sweetness to it. This, I mean, like really, really dark, like choking, I mean, uh, choking, cooking chocolate, 90%, you know, just black chocolate, very little 
if any sweetened uh, sugar in it. And I really wish it had used maybe like a slightly less, like slightly less dark chocolate. I wish there was more of a, a lactose present taste to it. I wish I could taste more of the vanilla. Not doing any of that for me. The maltiness isn't bad. It isn't super rough. I was I was a little worried with how it smelled. Um, I think there's almost enough. There's a there's a decent amount of smoke in it. I feel like the smoke almost keeps the the too maltiness taste down, and I think that works pretty well together. Well, that's really it. There's not a lot of other stuff. It's a very very dark chocolate um, maltiness capped with some smoke. That's really it. You know, a dab of vanilla, but it, it needs to be more. There needs to be some sweeter elements to it. It's just not doing it for me. Um, it's a robust port. I don't even know if I'd call it robust. Like, you could make it more robust and still have some more pronounced flavors. It's just kind of like... I don't know. It's almost like smoke is the predominant flavor. You know, like like you burn the burgers on the grill and you got more smoke than you wanted to. Uh, or, you know, you're trying to do a campfire and there's more smoke because the wood's just wet or something. It's, like, I, it's not, it's just not doing it for me. It's not the worst tasting thing I've had. I'm, I'm just not feeling it. So... I mean, it's okay, but I don't know. I'll give it a half. Like, it's not god awful. There is some. It's drinkable. It's basically as as uh, complimentary as I'm gonna get with this thing. It's drinkable. If it's in front of you, you will be able to drink it. You like, you won't like like ugh, the entire time. But there's just not. There's nothing really interesting with it. I'm not really sure what I was expecting from a Lion and Kugel Porter. I don't know. I just had a, a like a Sam Adams um, cream stout, and I, I mean, not the same, but I guess I was expecting a little more something from this, and it's not. So yeah, I'll have. Um, the next category is about the price, and I mean. It costs what a line in Google cost. You know what a line in Google costs. You can probably get a single one of these, dollar forty-five, dollar fifty, dollar seventy-five, right around there. Um, cheap for you know something like this. But like, even but even I mean, even so, so it's it's inexpensive, but that doesn't mean I want just a, a not great beer for the price. I feel like I'd rather pay a quarter more for beer and get something that's a little more interesting so I feel like you could probably get more of the uh, I don't know it's just not nothing about this is this wowing me and um, I feel like even for the price it's like the price is affordable but do you want to like a probably one of the lesser porters you're going to get I'm actually going to give it a half. Even though it's it's very affordable, you can do better for not much more. So I'm going to give it a half on price. Like, you're not going to go broke, but you can do better for a, a similar price point. Um, our next category is uh, distinction. How distinct is it? It's not. It is, you got some smoke, you got some black, black, dark, dark chocolate, a little maltiness, and that's really it. I'm not getting that vanilla. I mean, if this, if the beer, the porter was aged in vanilla, which makes it sound like the uh, like the cask was built out of vanilla beans, it should have more of a presence. It doesn't. There's almost none in there. I mean, even vanilla is not like uh, all that unique in a porter, but 
there's just nothing going on with this thing. It's I'm bored with it. I'm like two sips in, and I'm just bored with the beer. And so it's not the stank. I'm not going to recommend it on this uh, Next category is drinkability, and I mean, I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's easy to drink. You know, eight six percent, which is. Meh. But I do feel, I feel like after one, I just feel like, all right, I gotta, I'm gonna switch to something else. I'm just pure bored with the drink. There's nothing that's like bringing me back. So, I mean, drinkability, I mean, ugh. what do you think? It's kind of blah, right? Drinkability, it's like, ugh. I mean, okay, I'll recommend it on drinkability. It's easy to drink. There's not a lot to it, but I feel, I mean, again, I'm bored. I'm bored with it. There's just nothing working. There's, no, there's nothing, there's not a lot of uh, redeeming factors other than it's just not piss poor. I mean, so, uh, yeah, sure, I'll give it a, I'll recommend it for drinkability. Um, all right, last category is what I bought again, and uh, you probably already know the answer to that, but I will not be buying it again. There's just nothing really working for me with this. It's, I mean, it's okay. It's drinkable. If somebody has it, you know, it's kind of like, okay, fine. But I guess Lion Cool should just stick to the shandies. Uh, because I feel like the, the last two non shandies I've had from them, which would be the Oktoberfest and the Porter, it's just like, you know, it's like somebody that's really, that's good at making like, like, um, cooking food on the stove top and then they try to bake cookies and it's just like, stick to, stick to cooking, not baking, man. Stick to Shandy's, let the other beer, like, let the other companies deal with the other beers. It's just not really doing it. There's nothing that great about it. You know, if you want something cheap and you want a porter, sure, by all means, go for it. But it's you're not going to be excited to have it, basically. But that is my short and sweet review of Lonnie Kugel's uh, Snow Drift Vanilla Porter. What do you think? This thing's been around for a while. Do you like it? Is um, do you do you get more of the vanilla than I do? Because I'm just it's, there's not much there, especially when it's slapped right on the label. Uh, right under the line in Google. So, I don't know. I'm just, uh, it's just not for me. It's not doing it for me. But, uh, yeah, if you could like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and uh, I'll be bringing more beer reviews to you shortly. So, anyways, for myself and for the Lining Google Snowdrift Vanilla Porter, take it easy.